Hiding in the jungle of northern Cambodia, on a site measuring 162 hectares, Angkor Wat is the largest religious structure in the world. This ancient mega-metropolis was once part of the mighty Khmer Empire that conquered and controlled a vast kingdom in Southeast Asia, but somehow vanished. The ancient city of Angkor was once the biggest city on earth. To put it into perspective, it was four times that of the Vatican City, the smallest country in the world, and one could easily fit the pyramids of Giza on the central island with more than enough space left for the Taj Mahal and even its gardens. So today we've gotten a guide to help us understand more of it because it's really complex and we're going to try and understand how it came about and also why it was abandoned. If you're new to this channel, we're Leanne and Dan, better known as the Buddy Moon. We quit our jobs two years ago to pursue our dream of traveling the world. We just finished a grueling three-day bike trip known as the Takek Loop in Laos. Yeah, go Danny! I don't think this was a good idea. This is crazy! Where we jumped on a bus. It has been a, a very long night and a very a bumpy road. And crossed the border into our 10th country of this year, Cambodia, to tick off a lifelong dream of visiting Angkor Wat and understanding its mysteries. So we're actually just walking into Angkor Wat, I can't see here. Angkor Wat, in order to see the sun rise and then thereafter we're actually going to explore a little bit of this ancient city. The city of Angkor served as a royal center from which a dynasty of Khmer kings ruled. From the end of the 19th century until the 13th century, numerous construction projects were undertaken, the most notable being Angkor Wat. Now that the sun has risen, you can actually get a good idea of what this place looks like. So, over there we actually have the gate, and this apparently was two libraries that they used. But that gate was only for the king, so what you're looking at is the main road for the king only, that people were not allowed upon. And then in front of us we have Angkor Wat, one of the most famous temples in the world. And here you can already see some of the stone. It's basically 900 years old and you can see how much detail there actually is inside of this, everywhere. Angkor Wat was built on the orders of Khmer King Suryavarman II in the early 12th century as a vast Hindu temple within which his remains were to be buried once he passed away. So you're busy entering the temple from the west gate because the king actually wanted this to face towards the west because he believed that when he died he'd be able to become one of the gods, one of the Hindu gods. So he was actually buried inside of here and this was created for him for when he died. So this is like a tomb almost? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's really tomb. cool. Yeah, it's actually quite dark. You can see they've used some of the wooden stairs just to preserve the stone. But here is some more detail. All the rocks and small detail. You can see that it didn't finish completely as it's not gone all the way to the top. This is just incredible walking around here to think I'm actually standing in a place that is 900 years old where people 900 years ago used to walk. It's actually unreal. After being swallowed up by jungle for centuries, Angkor Wat was rediscovered in 1860 by a French scientist who was looking for insects. When the scientist discovered Angkor Wat, he was baffled as to how a structure of its size could be deserted and he questioned its purpose. Locals in the area could not explain what Angkor Wat was and many believed it was actually built by the gods. Normally we knock our chest that uh, one and until the sun finish and then one more, one more. Yeah, like you see that the echo. So they say a wish. And then they would hit yeah, their chest and then that wish would be sent to yeah, the gods. Yeah, near to the... Near to the wall, right? Yeah. Eh? Wow, it sounds like a drum. Oh, it's working! <laughs> so inside here, before people actually used to go inside the temple, they used to knock on their chest so that 
the vibration of that and the sound would echo right in here and then they believed that those vibrations and stuff would be going to the god. After the scientist wrote about his discovery of Angkor Wat in a journal, many French scholars came to Cambodia to study Angkor Wat and to uncover its purpose. One French scholar in particular could read and translate the ancient Sanskrit writings found on the walls of the temple. You can see some more Sanskrit on the wall over here as well. And actually all over, because there's more over here. It was through his translations that we are able to understand the purpose of Angkor and just how powerful this ancient kingdom was. Check how thin these stairs are. My foot can't even fit completely on it. Whew. We're actually just walking around here and just admiring all that this place has to offer. It's absolutely incredible what they've discovered. Look, it's all made out of stone. Everything is just made out of stone. And you can actually see how big it is. Like there's the one wall all the way down there. And the temple's here in front. Here they're busy renovating some of it. And then here's the other end. Here you can see the stairs have been so badly destroyed or too narrow that they actually had to create wooden stairs so that people of today can actually climb up this thing. Why were the stairs so thin? Uh, because that, uh, the temple it is a temple of the heaven. And so that uh, walking up to the heaven, that's not easy. Yeah, they have to try it's very hard. So you can see all the way to the top, they actually have three layers. Here's one. Here we have another layer, which we are basically inside of. And then over there, is your third layer and then only on the outsides is where you get your rivers and your plantations. And below the middle, 23 meter here. Oh yeah. wow. So from the middle of here, 23 yeah, meter down is where the ashes of the king. Yeah, and so below the middle, the 23 meter, then the ashes of the king. Yeah, and inside here. Like, are the ashes of the king still there? Uh, yeah. They're yeah, still yeah, there? Yeah, 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 it's still, it's still here. So clearly the top was where you could go to heaven and this is where the king wanted to be buried right in the center of this so you can see that the stairs are super super steep because it must be difficult to get to heaven okay you can actually still see some of them restoring some of the little parts of the temple because when they found it it was not exactly in the state that we see today most of it was but there were many parts that were broken it's covered by the sandstone but inside here, the, the, this is the laterai. Laterai stone. Yeah. Oh, so they built the laterai stone yeah, first yeah. and then they put and the I sandstone on top yeah, of the it. Sandstone, we call the sandstone that easy to carve in. Normally you can walk up to the top? Uh, yeah, with the staircase here, with the frame, the hand frame. But, but today, that is the holy day. They, oh. they close just the holy day. So we yeah. came on the wrong day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man! man. So we can actually walk to the top, but because it's a holy day today here in Cambodia, we can't. <laughs> Out of all days, closed on holy, holy day. And what holy day is today? Oh, holy day, they mean the Buddha day. Is today the Buddha day because yeah. it's a Friday? Yeah, not, not Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They mean eight days. Yeah, and after another eight days that we call the uh, Buddha day. But this is basically the center of what Angkor Wat is. Like this is what you see on all of the pictures and we get to see it with our own two eyeballs. And like obviously we're not going to understand all of the history that took place here but just to understand little bits is so nice. The detail is what's impressing me the most like how much time it actually took to build and carve everything out of stone and for it still to be preserved after 900 years is really really insane like being here and also being here in a time where there's less tourists is incredible yeah. but the question remains how did one of the largest most prosperous most sophisticated kingdom in the history of southeast asia just vanish mr han yep how are you Good. Are we ready to go in the Black Stallion? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for waiting for okay, us. Okay. So right now we go to Angkor Tom. Okay, thank you. Got our own little Thanks ride for the day. So now you can actually see what our ride looks like. We've got another bench there for two people. This is our little bench. 
that we get to sit on <laughs> and we've kind of hired Mr. Han for the whole day. He's only charged us like $18 and we've got him so we can basically go wherever we want to go within <laughs> Encore. It's so big so a tuk-tuk driver is definitely needed because you cannot walk on foot from one place to the next. Yeah, as I said earlier inside the video, Angkor was four times bigger than the Vatican City, which is the smallest city in the world. So it is huge. So Angkor Wat was built for one king and the size of this temple shows the power that he had. Now there are many other temples within this region as well that were built for kings that followed him, but none of them are as big as what Angkor Wat is. Oh, there's some more stuff that they're excavating. I think there's another temple over there. And then here is the lake. There you can actually see Uncle Wat. And this kind of lake or moat was used for water because the Khmer people over here a thousand years ago were using the water to actually cultivate rice and do rice and stuff like that. As that was one of their biggest exporting factors or towards other countries in order to make money as well as arts and crafts. And that's why we can actually see all the beautiful stone markings on the temple. So we've just entered a gate, or we're going to enter a gate here in Angkor Tom, and we're not gonna hire another guide. So we're just gonna go through it and explore it a little bit and just see what it's like, just as a normal person without knowing too much about it, and just see the marvelous architecture that they have around here. Check it this, so this is what the gate looks like. And you can see it's a marvelous gate, and we've got the river to the right and to the left. But look at this detail. That is incredible. You can see some of the nose has been chopped. But the proportions are done so well. I don't think we'd be able to do proportions out of stone nowadays. No, I don't think so either. Like they had a skill that's clearly been lost. So Angkor Wat was a temple. And this over here apparently is where the city was. Where they did a lot of trade and bartering and all that type of stuff. And this was the entrance towards it. Check the faces on this side. They all have different faces. You can see this one's got different eyebrows to that one. And then this one in between the eyes is a different symbol to this one here. And then right at the end, they have a few faces stacked on top of each other facing in different directions. And you can see that even in the entrance. There's a face facing that way towards the front and then there's another one facing that side. Are you ready to walk into the city? I'm ready to walk into the city. Wow, check how cool this is. Look above. That is really awesome. Yeah, you can see some doors into the walls. This side is a small one. And the stairs are just as steep as what we saw in Angkor Wat. This is really so cool. There's a car behind us. Go, go, go. <laughs> I think Mr. Han's waiting for us here somewhere. So what we're traveling through now is what used to be known as the city. But as you can see, there's not really much left today. Wow, look how cool that looks. Thank you, Mr. Han. So here we've come to the Bayan Temple. But just to the right here, you can actually see some archaeologists that are still busy digging to find more rock and more pieces of stone. Because it's a thousand years old, a lot of the stuff is actually underground and needs to be excavated. It's just small things like these statues or like the temples that are actually sticking out but most of the roads and all that type of stuff is all underground imagine being a person to find a piece that keys all of this together like how amazing must that be that's true hey baby Ooh. Ooh, don't fall please <laughs> something that i'm very surprised about even though these structures are so perfect in the way they are built the ground is not so good i just keep tripping everywhere yeah you can see this bayan temple He's actually not as well kept as the Angkor Wat that we saw. And you can see there's pieces of building missing here. There's there as well. And the lines are not so straight. Now here you'll see it's actually quite curvy and wavy. But these are the ones that are kept to the most original temples within this area is what I understand. Although we had a guide in our 
previous one and this one we're not getting a guide to just try and get the normal experience of what it's like to be walking around and in one of these temples yeah we're just entering and you can already see some of the stones which are so beautifully crafted here as well as there's some more these ones don't have so much details as the other ones did in Angkor Wat but the proportions, the body proportions are still super super good these ones have faces on them look there, there's a face on that massive pillar check how beautiful the faces are on top there there we have some more faces I actually feel like one of these things are going to fall because oh, the, the rocks look so brittle like look at that it looks like it's about to fall you can see they are trying to keep things into place as above me there's actually these rods to help with keeping the structure yeah there's some scaffolding and here's even some more scaffolding just to make sure it doesn't collapse but you can see the doorway here is one entire piece of stone then they have like a lintel on top and then here is another piece of stone and generally all of them have these beautiful little patterns on them now you actually get a feel of how they built these towers that like we're standing underneath one wow that just looks like it's gonna fall straight on me you can see they just piled the rocks on top of each other slowly to form a like a closed cylinder it's crazy to stand in here it still amazes me that I'm actually walking where people used to walk 900 years ago and that's one of the things that fascinate me most about walking around these places is like I don't know you f you feel the 900 year oldness you know it's not like new age like walking in a mall and you're just walking in a mall I actually feel like I'm somewhat part of what was here 900 years ago I feel it more so with this temple than with the Angkor Wat because the Angkor Wat was so like perfectly kept or restored whereas this one's like half restored half not restored so you get the idea that it was ruined and abandoned we're getting that feeling that we're the people that discovered this yeah. one because <laughs> yeah I, we're the explorers because it's like very untouched which is kind of amazing it's kind of giving me a nicer feel than what Angkor Wat did to be honest I, I feel like I'm really part of history standing here so archaeologists that are actually discovering like the parts towards these temples you can actually see here that they've marked some of them so they've clearly created a grid as to what they think the temples will look like and where the stones have fallen and then they will start building them and putting them together and here you can see it's all just lying waiting to be built and put together so this used to be the stairs and now they've created stairs for us modern age humans the reason we are climbing these stairs is because this is the only temple we have found that you can actually get to the top and get a view of the entire Angkor area. We basically have this one to ourselves. <laughs> How cool is this? This is a low one. Oh, it's actually quite cool under the rocks. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, wee. That's far down. Have you made it to the top? Wow. Whew. Check at this. I can imagine the views are pretty from down there. Just because it has a very long walkway. It's like a whole nother level. And then the temple went further up. You can actually see the stone that was used as a foundation and then the rock laid around it a lot of the stone is actually missing but you have to see this wow I can just understand the scale of just one temple like we've literally climbed about three or four levels that's crazy so you're probably wondering how such a mega and sophisticated city was just abandoned 
while the people here in Angkor were dedicated to keeping the temples and to doing the agriculture as well as their arts and crafts and they weren't necessarily prepared for battle. So when their enemies like Thailand came in and wanted war against them, they weren't equipped and therefore the people who went into battle mainly died and the people who were left over were held captive. And that is why the city was abandoned and a lot of their culture and traditions were lost with it. So Angkor is just ginormous. I think we've only scratched the surface of exploring this place. We had a one day pass, but you can get a three day and a seven day pass to explore this whole place. If it's one thing we wished we could have changed is actually getting a guide at Angkor Wat because he mainly taught us about the Hindu religion with in Angkor Wat rather than how it was built and how the people truly lived in it and all that type of stuff. So I would next time rather actually watch a documentary on the architecture and the building and the farming about it and come to Angkor Wat by myself, enjoy it myself and understand how it actually came about because of the documentaries I watched and not personally because of the Hindu religion. Although it is fascinating, you want to know about something that was built a thousand years ago. Yeah. Coming from a person that's got a construction background and coming from someone who studied sociology and anthropology I really wanted to learn more about the culture as well yeah but I'm really glad for what we did see yeah it's incredible <laughs> it's a beautiful place and it's something you kind of have to see with your own eyes yeah but if you like this video give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and maybe even consider giving a super thanks and then we'll see you on the rest of our Cambodian adventures